Hey, what's going on? This is E. Jones. Black Elvis, you already know. Bottom to the top. Who's Be back? Yo, man. First of all, you're looking good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Got it all. Oh, are you swaggy yourself over there? Yo, man, got that good bottom to the top hoops gear. We'll be available real soon. Check out that Becom TV website mm -hmm. uh, for purchases. Get you, get you a good sweatsuit or something. Shigera! Yeah, winter hats, hoodies, all of that, man. Yes, You'll sir. be seeing more gear, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. for the people who've been hollering at us, yes, we got you over to get it. Mm -hmm. Alright, L. This is a, a topic, man, that, that, oh, it's a sore spot sometimes. Yes, it is. We talking about AU basketball. Mm -hmm. um, and how uneducated people are. Well, we want to try to educate the uneducated, mm -hmm. inform the misinformed, mm -hmm. and just help some of the people who might have the knowledge yeah. be able to further uh, assist them in their decision making. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. Uh, let's talk about some of the misconceptions with okay. AAU basketball. Well, first things first, why don't we do it like this? Yep. I'm a parent. Okay. I got a junior in high school. Okay. A rising senior. Yes. I hear the talk. Uh -huh. You have to be on the EYBL circuit in order to get a major Division One scholarship. Is that true? No. Okay. No, you don't. You I don't need to, you to give detail. You don't have to be on the EYBL, the Under Armour Circuit, the Adidas Gauntlet. You don't have to. Okay. Does it help you? Well, absolutely it does. Because by being on those circuits, what it does is it provides you a platform for coaches to be able to see you against the top talent. Got you. EYBL is widely recognized as the best high school talent comprised in one area. At got the time. you. Got That's you. true. Got you. That's been confirmed by college coaches, scouts, uh, and I think if I'm ranking them in order, I think it would be next Under Armour and then Adidas. Right? Gotcha. Okay. Now, there are plenty of circuits out there, including uh, the Hoop Group does a great job. Um, the, the, uh, mm. NY to LA does an amazing job. Mm. Uh, my man uh, Gary Dinos with Pangos, mm. they do a good job, man. And, and I just think that there's a lot of people who believe that it's just EYBL or bust. Like yeah. just, over, just sneaker circuit or bust, that's not true. Got you. Because coaches go to all of these circuits mm -hmm. and you want to be on a circuit that has been proven, okay. has some history, okay. um, get the coaches to come out. Okay. And, and there's plenty of people who do that. Um, and and it's just, and, and my man Rob Engerman, he does an amazing, amazing job supports uh, our program with the New York Dragons, okay. uh, and, and we always, always, always go out there, and, and, and he does a great job as well. So, to answer your question, no, you don't have to be on the EYBL, will it help? Yes, but you just want to be somewhere where it's organized, good competition, because in order to be evaluated, the coaches have to see you against somebody. Mm -hmm. If not, that 40 ball or that 50 points, and you just putting your highlights up, and no turnovers, no mistake. It, it doesn't really hold the same weight if you're not doing it against anybody and it's not like a full game because now you're talking about a scholarship mm. and accepting a scholarship. So that's mm. kind of the Now what about this? Okay. So even if you're not on the EYBL circuit, right. you're telling me if I'm on the Adidas Under Armour circuit, I still can get a major scholarship. Yeah. Does it reflect on the people who's running the program where you go? Meaning their relationships Absolutely. and their access. Absolutely. Explain that, please. Absolutely. Well, the thing you want to do is you want to be with somebody who has your best interest at heart, and understands who you are, and is willing to be honest with you about what they see. Mm. Because what you see and what I see, you as a parent see your child as something. Me as an evaluator, I see something different. Mm. If we can't find a middle ground, if we're not in agreement about what or who your child is as a as a player and as a as a student, mm. then that's probably not a good fit mm. because maybe your expectations are too high for the coach or the program director. And if you don't get what mm -hmm. you're looking to get, or you don't have an agreement about what the goal is, mm -hmm. then it's never going to work gotcha. because you're, you're constantly going to feel like you're being shortchanged or your kids being put to the back burner, like. A program director or a coach needs to be able to say to a kid, listen, we see you as the seventh man. We potentially see you getting 13 minutes a game. 
I'm going to call, you know, uh, Harvard and Brown because I think you can play at that level. You're high academic. And I think that, you mm -hmm. know, not to gotcha. say that Brown or Harvard would get the seventh man, mm -hmm. but if you got 12 Division One kids and this kid's high academic and they're looking for a wingman mm -hmm. and you fit that mold, then we got to talk about the marketing strategy and the, the resources mm -hmm. of the coaches mm -hmm. or directors. So, yes, the access that they have definitely will help. Okay. Because what, what it is is, you know, I always use the analogy, I can get you to the party. Yes. But you got to dance. But you got to dance. I, absolutely. And you can know as many people as you want to. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the coach still has to make the decision and say, I want this kid. Mm. And that's usually Makes based sense. on if you're qualified and are you good enough to play at that level. Mm. Got you. And honesty, man. Okay. Honesty. I'm sorry to, to, to interject, but honesty between the parent honesty of the coach or the program director about what we're doing. You got to be able to accept, you know, constructive criticism and truth. Mm -hmm. Talk. Hear that? Hear that? Listen. Okay, now I got another one for you. Mm -hmm. I look at the circuit and I see what's going on with summer ball. Mm -hmm. And, um... Which has changed. I mean, why do you say it's changed? I, I, I feel the same, but I want to hear your opinion. You said summer ball. Yes, yeah, Kids don't play in the park anymore. Mmm, you going where I was about to go. So why? Sure. Okay. But why is it that they're not playing? Like we was in the same boat coming up, but we hit the park. Yo, kids are literally saying, oh no, I don't go to the park because my knee. What so you different than Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, and we can continue to name all of the kids who came up from the hood, from the concrete. Well, Al, it. it's 2020. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, <laughs> and, and unfortunately, man, we as a gatekeepers have to also understand that this ain't our time. Mm. And we have to um, we have to get with the modern times of what's happening now. Okay. It's kind of like the rap music. Yeah. I don't particularly like it, but when I'm gonna just close my ears and be like, oh, I'm not listening. Even though they're talking about popping pills and all type of stupid stuff. Right. Right. So. So. <laughs> Stuff that y'all really listen to, no, no. our young viewers. Listen, but that's probably how our dads and our moms looked at us. What's all this hip hop beat about? That's you know, true. That's true. You know what I'm saying? So we just a little older now. Okay. And we, I we give you that. That's there, right. There's there's a disconnect between what they like and what we like, or what they do, what we do. Now there's some universal truths I believe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in terms of you know going out to the park and maybe they don't play as much as we did because. You know, at the end of the day, look at Isaiah Thomas. Mm -hmm. He ended his career at 32, maybe. Mm. LeBron's in his 18th season. Yeah, it's a crack. And, and, you know, it's just different now, man. I think that a, a healthy mix is good. Mm -hmm. I think you do need a little bit of that pop ball to get that toughness. Yeah, you do. You know what I mean? Regardless, get, yeah. and, and if you're just in the gym all the time, I think that kids become like... Robots. Yeah. <laughs> the pop... The park gets you to feel. Yeah. Being able to dribble through traffic, being comfortable in, in, in space, you know what I mean? Getting mm -hmm. dribbling through five people and, and, and making plays on the fly. Mm -hmm. If you're just always in the gym and you're not getting competition mm -hmm. and you ain't getting that like 35 year old man beating up on you in a three on three or whatever. Exactly. You need that. Everything is just so. It's a part of that heart. It's just so like. Cookie cutter. Mm, so you, you need that mix to be able to say, yo, let's go to Brooklyn. Because yeah. we would do it, go to different yeah. parks, different yeah. woods, different, different boroughs. Different yeah. So, so to that, to that form, summer ball has changed. It's changed. All right, well, let's, let's stay focused. Let's okay. stay where we are. All right, back to the EYBL and the AU stuff. Now, a lot's changed mm -hmm. as far as with the sessions. Yeah. A, parent, a lot of parents mm -hmm. don't know. Yeah. From what I heard, a lot of high school coaches don't know. Can you break that down a little bit for some of our viewers? Well, the first thing is, um, people were up in arms last year mm -hmm. uh, with the NCAA. So the NCAA switched from five live periods mm -hmm. that were exclusively dedicated to AAU. Mm -hmm. And there were two in April, mm -hmm. uh, usually at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. and. And then there were three in July, okay. which were in succession over three weekends. Gotcha. Leading into August, with August being a dead period, specifically for Division One. Yeah. 
Division two is a little different. Obviously, Division three has more flexibility. Now, with that being said, L, you talk about three live, five live periods. They cut it down to two. Wow. So, in my opinion, that's, that's just three different opportunities for you to play well and a coach to see you play well that day and now have interest in you. Sorry. D. Here's the other side. Here was their justification. Mm -hmm. They wanted to gain back some control, the NCAA. They started to say, okay, how do we control the narrative? Mm -hmm. Right? The NCAA and the NBA. Got you. So, on the heels of everything that happened in NCAA basketball last year, you got to figure that people are in these boardrooms and having these conference calls talking about how do we gain back control. Mm -hmm. And what does that really mean? Mm -hmm. It really means money, mm -hmm. right? So that's what we talk about. Means. So at the end of the day, I think that also there's some people who are very, are, are purists and they want to see the kids' best interests at heart. So I think it's a mixed bag and you can never generalize and say gotcha. the whole MTA is corrupt. I would never do that. Yeah. Gotcha. So what they did was they gave two live periods to the high schools Got you. last year. So you could play in two live periods with your high school. Got you. On your high school team only. To give some of the high school coaches a little more leverage again because when we was coming up, your high school coach dictated everything. I played for Riverside. Earn dictated. Mr. Mr. Lodge. God bless. God bless. Rest in peace. But your high school coach, he was in cahoots with him. Yeah. Now, the AUs basically said, first things first, if you don't play my kid, I'm, I'm sending him out of here. What kind of leverage is that? You're taking away the high school coach power, so now he's got to play ball, or you're not sending him any kids. I think this messed up, man. I really do. So, <laughs> I'm glad you expounded on that. So, so now, they also had two NCAA evaluating periods mm -hmm. where they picked, oh, I want to say roughly the top 2,000 kids in the country, mm -hmm. 500 from four regions, mm -hmm. and they brought them to campuses. One was at Illinois, one was at um, Connecticut, mm -hmm. you know, East Coast and Midwest. Not sure where the other two was. Mm -hmm. I think it was Southwest and West. And they brought these kids in. Mm -hmm. And you know what to be funny? I mean, to be honest, I don't even think a lot of the top players went. Mm -hmm. So wow. people started to create their own live period. Wow. Like organizers of events were just live streaming and the coaches were watching there. And people were just like, I'm not sending my top players. Mm. So you want to pigeonhole us? This is our way of getting back and saying, now who you going to have to evaluate at these camps? Makes sense. Wow. Top kids weren't even there. Wow. So you didn't really hear a whole lot of buzz about and the NCAA paid for a kid and one parent to go to the camp oh. for 2,000 kids. Wow. So, needless to say... They don't have the power. Sorry. Well, they do. No, but when I say that, meaning like... Well, well they, they do, and they try to... Uh, but they have the power it. once you get there. Right? Oh, no. Well... See, this is all being... I mean, they, they just they try to abuse it sometimes, and I think that people... You know, you play ball and you play by the rules as much as you can, mm -hmm. but when people feel like they need to fight back, this kind of stuff happens. Mm -hmm. So, to that point, um, okay. now there's, there, there, there should be three live periods, two in April, I believe, and one in July, which will help the kids who are still in high school mm -hmm. and need that look like the seniors. That last look. They can still go in and play in April mm -hmm. two times and try to get that last look. And, you know, we know from doing the last look live Absolutely. Uh, for Division 2s and Division 3s and JUCOs mm -hmm. and even prep schools, mm -hmm. we did an event, what was that, August? Yep. And kids last got, look live. And, we, and kids got looks, man. Yo, thank you, thank you, thank you to all of the programs. Chew, uh, Chew Smith Basketball, uh, Playtime, New Rochelle High School, New York Dragons, uh, Big Apple Sports, Everybody that came out, uh, Team Mega, everybody that came Black out. Ops in that? Oh, that no, was Black Ops wasn't, that was the Holiday Hoops class. Yeah, I told him, man. Just... Yo, man, I just be putting on for the city. We put on for the city, man. And, and, and I just try to give kids a platform. That's what you're you doing. You're really giving them a platform, man. 
Hold up, let me, let me, I, I'm, I'm, I gotta keep him focused. He's always keeping the guest focused. Let me keep him. So, a question that I've been asked time and time again mm -hmm. by parents, yeah. and I'm like, let me get back to you. Mm -hmm. I need you to go in detail and explain to them about clearing house. This is something that's a problem where you have a lot of coaches, you have a lot of kids, you have a lot of parents who just don't know. Well, here's the deal. Mm -hmm. In order to play in the NCAA Division I, it's a sliding scale. Mm. Uh, the minimum GPA as of, I believe, last year is 2.3. Okay. So you have to have a minimum of 2.3, and based on your GPA, mm -hmm. that will determine what your SAT scores need to be. Got you. So I don't have the scale in front of me, but it simply works like this. If you have the 2.3 as a base, mm -hmm. and you have to have 10 credits passed, by the end of your sixth semester. Mm. Which means not 10 credits from your transcript, 10 approved NCAA mm. core classes. Mm. Do you hear that, y'all? Listen. Which also means you need to have your core classes approved by your school. So if you go to a school that doesn't traditionally have Division I players, mm -hmm. as a parent, you need to be able to have your school submit the curriculum and the syllabus for those classes so you then can be eligible. So you could have done your job, passed all your classes, be an A student, and they never submitted their syllabus, and let's just say wow. you, 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 you're ready to sign a letter of intent, you literally cannot sign because you go to some school that you're the one Division One athlete in the last 10 years, and now everybody's scrambling mm. to try to get those classes submitted for the NCAA to approve or not approve. Mm, you seen it done? Man, unfortunately. Have you seen it done on a regular basis? Unfortunately. Come on parents, wake up. Kids, wake up, get on it early. Man, let me just say this. I'm challenging all of the high school coaches in New York City and around the country, whoever watches this, educate yourself and then educate the players before you even start practice. Mm -hmm. If you are asking these student athletes to come to school, be on time, play as hard as they can, win games, keep your job, uh, be a part of this team, buy in, because you always talk about the buy in of the kids. Absolutely. Do your job, man, and some of you are doing a great job, but let's make sure these kids are at least aware. Mm -hmm educated and in line with the courses that they need to take. Mm, like and so. if a kid's a transfer, let's not take the transfer if it's going to hurt them academically. Yeah. Or if let's put the plan in place. It just requires a, an additional step to make sure that these kids have the opportunity to be eligible. I'm not saying you got to do their work for them. I'm not saying that they're going to pass their classes. I'm not saying that you need to be doing that because kids are part to blame too and parents. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying as a coach, there should never be a situation where a kid does his job or her job mm -hmm. academically and you're not eligible gotcha. because of something that the coach or the school didn't do. Gotcha. All right, well, for the most part, I feel like I'm kind of like doing the interview in here and you're like, because you're answering all the questions. So I would like you to just kind of like wrap it up in one shell because we talked about the AU situation. We talked about, do you really actually have to play for one of these top tier programs to actually get a scholarship? But more importantly, he really touched and gave detail on clearinghousing, you know, what's required and what needs to be done. So I'm gonna leave it on you to can close I, can, I, can I summarize? Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm gonna try my best not to be long winded. Okay. But I'm passionate about this and I'm gonna say this, man. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's very important for, for kids and parents to get independent assessments. Mm. Go to somebody who doesn't know your kid. Have them work your kid out. Go to somebody and have them tutor your kid. Mm. Test their aptitude. Because I can tell you, L man, your son is nice, but it's coming with a bias because I know you. Because I know you. Right? Mm -hmm. Have somebody work your kid out. Yo, what level do you think he is? What do you think he can play? She can play, mm. right? Mm. Get SAT test courses or, or prep courses and be able to see where your kid is academically. Yes. Get tutoring if you need to. 
as it relates to AAU, man, have your kid play with somebody you feel is going to make your kid better. Mm -hmm. Somewhere your kid's going to have an opportunity to play. Mm -hmm. Somewhere that's going to be a good influence on them as a human being. And a mentor. Right? So, mm -hmm. these are the people that are spending a lot of time with your children. Yeah. And, and as a parent, man, just enjoy the process. Yeah. Don't be one of those overzeal parents. Ah! Yo, you look crazy. Let me, can I give him a look? I, I know I told him to wrap it. But I have to say this, only one minute. Greg Anthony, Cole Anthony, I've been in the gym three times while his son was in high school. He sits up in the stand and he chills and he watches because I'm sure he's putting the preparation in when no one else is looking. So now I'm not going to be at the game embarrassing my child. And Yo, what are you doing? Because you look crazy, parents. I'm saying this for a reason. You look crazy. Relax. If you want to coach and you want to get them together, you do that, not at the game. And, and also, you know, you got to trust the people that are coaching your kids. If, sure. if, if, if you don't trust them, you can't be sideline coaching. Yeah. I'm all for cheering. I'm all for... And don't, don't be rising to other teams' kids. And, 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 and that, You know what? I get it. You know what I mean? And, and I Al, let's just, I'm not a parent. Yeah. So I, I don't know what that feeling yeah, is like. Either, so that's true, yeah, you're right. So I'm, I'm sure that there's good intention and they oh, want the best that. for their kids, but I don't know if people see themselves. Yeah. Well, I don't know, I don't know if they hear what people say about them and won't say to them. Mm, that was big, that was big. You know what I mean? So, at the end of the day, man, be a reflection of who you want to be. They don't probably see it until they see somebody else do it and they say, do I look like that? Mm, gosh, oh, when it's all over. Yeah, I was bugging. I was bugging, <laughs> yep. And you know what, to be honest with you, when your son is really good or your daughter's really good, it's really nothing to be going crazy about. This is what you expected and this is what you put the work in for. So why are you jumping around? Act like you've been here before. Act like you've been in the dance before. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. th this is, I mean, everybody gets excited. Everybody gets enthused. But when you're jumping out the window. Yeah, you look crazy. They be looking crazy. I, 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 I don't know if you watch college football, but there's a kid who used to play with Penn State, played in the NFL. Kajana Carter. Okay. And he, he, he there was like, man, you just score a touchdown, you take a very business like approach. He said, Well, I gotta act like I've been here before. And I gotta I, I expect to be there. So, you know, if I if I celebrate that means that I, I don't really plan on coming back. Ooh, fire. Look at Derek Jeter. Fire. Why do people revere him in, in enemy territory? Because he did it with class. Every time. You know what I mean? So in closing, man, mm -hmm. make sure you're prepared. Make sure you do the research. Information is available to you on the internet. Um, you can hit us up. Absolutely. Right? You can hit us up on, on BCOM TV. Um, and we'll answer any questions that you have, man, uh, to try to educate you. And, you know, we'll be doing some, um, some, some information when AAU season comes around posting when tryouts are, mm -hmm. what teams are on what circuit, because I'm sure there'll be some, some moving around. Mm -hmm. But man, Elvis, this was a much needed show. Absolutely, great uh, show. I appreciate the platform, and hopefully you guys were educated on some of the AU process Absolutely. in Clearing House and, and, and what you could and should be doing going forward. Best of luck to all of the student athletes, mm -hmm. men and women, mm -hmm. uh, with your high school career and the end of it and your college career mm -hmm. and making your choice. That's it. E. Black Jones. Elvis. Yo, bottom to the top hoop, city legend. Yes, sir. Elvis, you already know. Shout out to E, giving us that informative information. Peace out.